are the glues that I use the most. Often you hear about hide glue. Well, when we talk about hide glue, we're talking about hot hide glue. Now, hot hide glue will come in a couple of different strengths. Uh, you'll see it rated 192, I think up to 350 some. It depends where you get your glue. Uh, I buy most of mine through a uh, called tools for working wood they actually have the different strengths of hot hide glue now the higher the hot the higher the number the stronger the glue is in shear per square inch now that doesn't mean that well I'll go get the big heavy duty glue and then I could just add water it doesn't quite work that way uh, I find I think the one I use is a number 215 there's basically three, 192, the 215, and the 350. I'm, I'm, and don't hold me to that. I'm just going off the top of my head. So I do like the, the 200 and the 192. Those are the two I use the most. I don't like the glue, high glue out of the bottle. Uh, I know some of you out there are saying, well, it worked for me. And that's it very well made. I just don't find it to be as good as the hot hide glue. And I also tried a number of different ways of working the hot hide glue. The baby bottle warmer, the whole nine yards, and I did, be honest with you, the glue pot is called a glue pot for a reason. And I won't consider using anything else. So, with that said about hot hide glue, it is probably one of the uh, most repairable glues next to fish glue that we can use. Uh, Martin used it up until the mid 60s. I use that one in fish glue probably 80% of my glue for guitars is fish glue and hot high glue. They are considered an animal protein glue. And I'm going to put that over there. Fish glue, this is the way it comes. You don't have to mix it has a shelf life of about two years and you can freeze it. With hot hide glue, you basically want to mix what you want to use. That's it. Don't, don't expect to mix it and use it a month from now. In fact, Jello is basically a hot hide glue product. Uh, not necessarily that you want to eat hot hide glue, but if you happen to be on a ship full of hot hide glue and you're stuck on a deserted island, you can eat it if you had to. Fish glue on the other hand, it's a very nice glue. You've used it a lot on back of stamps. It's very water soluble. Neither one of these creep and both of them will dry very hard. Uh, this you work just like tight bond. Put it on, clamp it. Both of these do require a little bit longer clamping time. I like to let them clamp overnight, 8 to 12 hours. Uh, I have already taken clamps off in as little as two, but I prefer to use the eight hour clamp time. This one, we're all familiar with good old fashioned tight bond. That's a, not alphaic, polyvinyl. Polyvinyl glue, it works very well. Very good glue for uh, poor wood joints, actually. It does do well gapping. Uh, but both of these can be easily repaired and re glued to each other because the glue will literally dissolve and become glue again. This unfortunately, if you have to take it apart, you've got to make sure you get all the old glue off if you want the new glue to hold. We're all familiar with good old fashioned super glue and activator. Uh, this comes in handy for a little touch up work. I've used this for fixing cracks. Uh, anything that I needed to glue in a hurry and it is a very strong and reliable glue. I use it a lot for inlaying my pearl. Last but not least is Duco Cement. There's also Weld Wood and a number of other products. They're basically the same type of glue. It's an acetone based glue and I use this anytime that I want to glue plastic to wood and I just smear it on, wipe it off and clamp it down uh, using tape a lot for the clamp. So, now that we just discussed the different glues, how much glue do you put on? Well, with super glue, you can get different viscosities. You can get it real thin, which I do like to use a lot, or medium. Medium will work well for gap filling. You have activator to try to 
promote the curing process. Uh, but anybody who, who has used this knows what it is. It's a good product. Try not to breathe the fumes, uh, but if you need an instant repair, this will glue just about anything to anything. Uh, and you will glue your skin to skin. You can glue it. We had one student here who actually glued himself to our milling machine, which was rather comical. So that's about the super glue. Duco, anybody who has used this to smear it on, wipe it off, you're good to go. Now, with the wood glues, these three glues, I'm going to call them your water-based wood glues. The amount of glue is going to be about the same. You want to put enough glue down that you can see glue, but not so much glue that you can't see the wood. So, I think with tight bond being probably more photogenic here, when I put my glue on, I run a nice little bead. And I think you can see that right there. If you put too much glue on, you're wasting glue. So, we have that nice little cover. You can spread it with your finger. You can put it on with a brush. But can you see, I have a nice thin film of glue. You can see the glue there, but you can also see the wood. All right? For the best results in gluing, you actually want to put a little glue on both, on both surfaces. Then, when you actually clamp it, you want to figure that you want to have between 8 and 10 pounds of clamping force per square inch. So you can see there is even squeeze out. I don't have a big runny gloppy mess. Actually, I probably could have used a little bit less glue here than what's showing. But you can see I'm getting a good tight mating joint and that little bit of clamp will work just fine. And in about two hours, well probably in 20 minutes, you will not get that apart. If you needed to get this apart, you can heat it up. You can work a spatula, a knife, a razor blade, a putty knife between the joint at about 145 degrees the glue will want to break down and separate. Both woods, wood glues that I'm showing here, or all three, will clean up well with water. These two are fantastic because in the morning what you don't get with a damp cloth you can actually scrub out with a toothbrush. Uh, my favorite term for saying about gluing, especially when we're doing clamp or uh, top bracing, back bracing, whatever, you let the glue sit and after about five or ten minutes, and I can guarantee you the guys are going to know exactly what I'm talking about, that glue will boogify and it will come up and it will literally come off in a nice clean piece. It will just come off like a rubber band. And you can roll it between your fingers and flick it in the trash. You'll understand exactly what I mean by boogify. These two glues will do the same thing, but you can actually scrape them off. Uh, my favorite glue remover is right here. A little piece of plastic, and I literally grind a little sharp edge on it, and I can go in, scrape the joint clean, wipe it with a warm rag, and in the morning, if there is some, some glue residue, just a, a little scrub with a, a, a little toothbrush and warm water, it'll clean up beautifully. So that's what I have to say about glues. I hope that that helped clarify things a little bit. Uh, you can refrigerate, you can freeze fish glue, good for two years. Hot hide glue, if you're going to use it today or tomorrow, don't make any more. I always try to mix mine and keep it as fresh as I can and just use what I'm using for the batch I'm using. Tight bond, if it gets frozen, it's destroyed. When in doubt, you can always do a uh, test sample. Glue it up, and if it doesn't stick, throw it away. Uh, it, there's no point in spending 100 hours building a guitar with bad glue. Alrighty, I hope that helped answer some questions about glue. We do carry the fish glue product here. I found it next to hot high glue. This stuff is just fantastic. You've got a good open time with hot high glue. It's kind of, you got seconds. Hurry up and get it done. Here you have almost 20 minutes of open time. I use this a lot for gluing my tops and backs on. 
Uh, if you do want to expend your, your open time with the hot hide glue, you can use heat lamps, you can use a hot air dryer, something to help get the temperature up and hold the, uh, your, your product as warm as you can handle it. Uh, the more heat, the longer the open time. Uh, you can add a little water to extend open time, uh, but I find that that can be detrimental to your glue hold. Uh, when you mix this, read the instructions, but you're going to see half by weight. So you want to use the same amount of weight in water as you do with the product. Uh, the more you do it, the more familiar you get with it, you'll be able to eyeball it in no time. So with that, I hope that has helped you decide which glues you want to use. I will say that these two, you need to have a good mating surface. It's all about joint integrity. Learn to make your joints very precise and you'll do well. Now, for a little example, you can see that that glue has started to boogify. In a couple more minutes, you'll just be able to wipe that off and you'll be good to go. And with that, I want to say thanks again for all the support. Uh, we know that we wouldn't be where we are without the help of you, and I thank you for that. Uh, see you soon. You can drop in also at Kick Guitar Forum at any time. We have a forum there where you can share your experience, and I hope that you will stop in and visit us. Thanks again. See you soon.